Well, St. Patrick's Day parades nationwide have been cancelled in a bid to stop the spread of COVID-19. Let's go over live to our reporter, Brianna Parkins, who is finding out about the effect on businesses and tourism. Good morning, Brianna. Good morning, Karen. We are just metres off what would be the main parade route in Dublin. But next week, unfortunately, the streets will be empty as that parade is not going ahead. Now, the decision has made people nervous given St. Patrick's Day brings over 70 million to the Irish economy. And joining me here this morning to talk about the potential economic impacts is Adrian Cummins from the Restaurant Association of Ireland and Owen Curry, a travel expert. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you, Brianna. Owen, was this the right call? Uh, very hard to tell at this stage, but it looks like the wrong call. The way it was done under pressure yesterday, uh, the Taoiseach immediately saying that uh, in the sentence after he denounced it, that there was probably no reason to do this. It looks like a victory for fear and fatalism over common sense. Two messages went out with that call yesterday. Ireland is closed for business internationally as tourist destination. And the second one is that uh, Ireland's problem is at a scale higher than it actually is. Are we at the same scale that France and Italy are, or are we just at the beginning of this phase? And uh, certainly countries around the world will be looking at their adding Ireland to their list of, of uh, citizens who will be quarantined or not allowed into the country. Well, Owen, two weeks ago we had zero cases and now we have 24, including community transmission. There is a risk that this could spread. Doesn't that public health risk outweigh potential impact on businesses? Well, anyone uh, tuning in to what uh, the World Health Organization would see is, would say, is that an outdoor event like the St. Patrick's Festival is one of the least um, dangerous uh, situations for it. The high, uh, the most dangerous are the indoor events and all of that is going to be taking place anyway for the St. Patrick's Festival. The people from America who have been fundraising to come to Dublin for the weekend to march in the parade, they're coming anyway. And all of that packing of pubs, which is sort of an Irish tradition over the St. Patrick's Festival, may actually occur earlier in the day. We have actually got rid of the healthier and the least uh, uh, dangerous uh, side of our St. Patrick's Festival and kept all the other parts in place. Well, the World Health Organization has said that the risk of a pandemic is, is very real. They're not alarmists. They wouldn't, be, they wouldn't be telling us that for fun. And also, we do get half a million visitors coming in and, and cramming those restaurants and cramming those pubs. So wouldn't cancelling the parade then deflect from that? and hopefully draw less people to the capital. Well, let's be clear. The World Health Organization has always said that closing down borders and that drawbridge up is not... It's actually counterproductive in terms of the damage it can do to an economy. So we do have a little bit of a disjoint between what some of the Irish consultants, some of the Irish consultants were saying, and that's where the pressure on the government came from. The approach, the response to this real threat, as everybody acknowledges how real the threat is, in the 21st century, looks like a 13th, 14th century response, just uh, close the doors and try and keep it out. We know that doesn't work. We know from the countries that have actually drawn up the drawbridge that it does actually get through. There's, we have to have a measured response, like uh, Scotland is still holding its rugby matches, and as in the months ahead, we will be able to tell whether shutting down the St. Patrick's Festival was effective because Scotland with the same population, same infection rate, will be operating and, uh, alongside us and we'll see whether that measure was actually uh, worth, uh, if it was actually merited in the first place. But of course you can sympathise with the government if someone died or, or transmission rates accelerated quickly, they'd be to blame. They sort of had no choice. Okay, Brianna. Uh, Health officials do what health officials do. They work out, they're scientists. They say we cannot rule out worst case. We cannot rule out that people will die as a result of this. And the media do what we do, which is basically ham it up and sort of say, get us, get everybody's going to die, which is what's really the noise we've been listening to, the infodemic we've been listening to for I, the last... I don't think I've told everyone that they're going to die, but look, let's, we'll get on to Adrian we'll, at the we'll, minute. It's on to the politicians to make a measured response. And we've seen Cheltenham going ahead. We've seen the well, well Scott and match going ahead with this weekend. Some countries are responding in a more measured way than others. I'd like to count Ireland among the more measured response. We're not in that position this morning.
Thank you for that. And move on to Adrian about the, the impacts on restaurants. Restaurants are already seeing impacts, aren't they, on their uh, business? Absolutely. People walking through the doors. We've seen about 80% uh, reduction in business since over the last uh, number of days. 40% um, of our domestic uh, market has started to drop off also. Uh, and what we want is we need a bit of support from the government. Uh, we saw some of that coming yesterday. Uh, the Patrick's Day decision is made. We need to, to step up to the plate and do what the authorities want us to do and listen to the chief medical officer and do everything that in our power to make sure that we as an industry do the right thing for the country in the national interest. And are there certain cuisines that have been impacted by this? Uh, that's true. I've seen over the last number of weeks uh, Chinese restaurants have seen a major drop in business and now has moved on to the Italian restaurants. So, I mean, we need to not... Not, uh, not fuel the hysteria and listen to the social media um, narrative at the moment. Uh, this is 23 cases in Ireland where we need to make sure that we listen to the chief medical officer, listen to the experts and do the right thing. And if we can do all of those things together, at least we have some hope. Do you think, but this is a question for you, do you think that this, the island's economy will recover from this? Um, St. Um, Patrick's Day would kickstart the tourist, tourist season. It's not a big travelling time. That's very much in our favour. Decisions are being made about uh, air access, even as we speak. The uh, major carriers are looking. So there is a chance to recover, but it really, really needs to even out very, very quickly and get this under control and keep the uh, noise a, a little bit away from the hysteria that Adrian was talking about. And Adrian, could this be potentially a, a death sentence for some struggling restaurants? Uh, the hospitality industry needs a lot of help now and I appeal to the government to try and help us. Uh, we were here in the crash in 2009-2010 and we did recover but we did get help back then. Is that that help we need again in, two, uh, in 2020. Brilliant. Thank you so much both you, for joining me here this morning. And as this beautiful Irish weather sets in, we'll be back a little bit later with the Lord Mayor.